Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to show you how to create your first catalog in Lightroom. I know you love to take photos. I know you like to be outdoor. Me too. Have adventures, explore new places. In the beginning, no one cares about the workflow, where to safely save your photos, the backups, uh, all that boring stuff. And more, where do I put my images? How do I store them? This is the first video of a mini series about Lightroom that I'm going to upload on this channel to give you my best advice on uh, how to set up an efficient and reliable workflow for your images. Once and forever. I work a lot with my students during my post-processing classes and workshops, so for some of you, I know exactly where you are going through. Okay, let's dive in. Schematically, here is like Lightroom works. Adobe Lightroom is a catalog-based post-processing and image management software. Lightroom catalog system allows non-destructive editing. A catalog is a database that tracks the location of your photos and information about them. When you edit photos, rate them, add keywords to them, or do anything to your photos, all those changes are stored in the catalog. This means that whichever adjustment you choose to apply to an image inside Lightroom, the original file always remains intact. That said, now I want to show you the basics from scratch. So I'm assuming you have Lightroom already installed on your computer, right? First thing first, I'm going to start creating a new fresh and clean catalog. To do that, I'm going to hold the Option key down and click on the Lightroom icon here on the dock. So I'm going to select Create a new catalog and I'm going to name it. By default, the catalog will be created in the Pictures folder. You can put it wherever you want, but my suggestion is to create a dedicated folder named, for instance, uh, Lightroom Catalog. Uh, I would avoid uh, using the system default folders like uh, Pictures uh, or Documents uh, or Downloads to put my catalog database. I don't want to take any risk of deleting my catalog accidentally while I'm moving files from those folders. If you use an SSD external hard drive, you can also consider saving the catalog there. For the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to save it on the desktop, but for you, make sure to choose a safe folder for your catalog database. So now I click Create, and here we have a clean catalog, the foundation of our workflow. I know uh, the main dialog box in Lightroom could be intimidating, but I can guarantee you that it will be absolutely easy to understand. I very much prefer to use one single catalog for my images. You can create a different catalogs, of course. You might want to have a catalog for landscape, one for portrait shots, uh, or a separate catalog for each specific trip, uh, and so on. It doesn't work for me. I want to be able to search images throughout my entire archive. It makes much more sense for me, of course. Using multiple catalogs, there is no way to search across them. I should open every single catalog to search within and it will take hours. Moreover, a multiple catalog workflow greatly increases the possibility for confusion and error, and most importantly, robs Lightroom of its organizational superpower. So just one catalog to rule them all, and that knows where all your files are. If you already have multiple catalogs in the past, no problem. In a few, I'll show you how to merge and organize them very easily. Before learning how to import your photos into Lightroom, let's have a quick look at the importing interface. Compared with Photoshop, Lightroom has a very structured architecture and design. It's very easy to understand that Lightroom thoughts of a workflow from the left to the right and from the top to the bottom. We can import our images from multiple sources, from an SD memory card, an external hard drive, or from other catalogs. On the upper left side, we have from our source, where images are coming from. In the middle, we can select what images to import, and on the right hand side is where I'm gonna place the images. So our destination. Let's start with the memory card. Here we go. Take your SD and CF memory card and plug in it in the, the card reader. 
When you plug in your memory card, by default, Lightroom brings up uh, uh, the importing window. Now, you should be able to see the images on the SD memory card. If not, make sure to have this checkbox uh, checked. And now Lightroom can see it through any other folder. The thing is that the camera saves your photos uh, on the memory card, creating uh, multiple subfolders. Okay, we have our memory card selected. And now we need to decide if we want to import all the images or just a few of them. I usually keep all the images selected and I'll make a proper selection after the import. Anyway, if you want to select just a portion of the list, you have to select the images you want to import by clicking on the checkbox. To select multiple images in the sequence, you have to click on the first image and then hold down the shift key and click on the last one. Make sure to click the checkbox. Or if you want to select uh, multiple scattered images, uh, you have to hold down command and click on each one you want to import. There are several methods to import your images in Lightroom based uh, on the source. Here on the top of the main window, we have four different options we can select. Copy as DNG and copy. The move and add options are hidden because you can select them only when you are importing from a hard drive, but I'll show you uh, them in the next section. The copy as DNG option copies the files from the card and at the same time converts them uh, to the DNG file format. Bear in mind that converting to DNG can easily double the time it takes uh, to complete an import. Then we have the copy option that makes uh, a really straightforward copy of all the images that are on the memory card and stores them uh, in the designated destination folder or subfolder. Right below the copy, there is another little bar and it says uh, all photos and new photos. Okay, what does it mean? All photos uh, will import everything in your memory card. New photos will import just the images that you took after the previous import. For instance, you might shot uh, a sunset. You will import your images in Lightroom before bed and the next morning you go out again to shooting uh, the sunrise using the same SD. It's only gonna take the ones that you haven't imported for that card. Then on the upper right side, we will define the folder where to save our photos. So I'm gonna click over here and we have multiple options. I'm gonna select other destination and I need to choose the specific folder where to put all the images. In this case, uh, I chose a uh, uh, photo archive. I like to see my images organized by date. So in the destination panel, I'm gonna make sure that uh, organize is by date. And I like to apply this date format, the year and then the year, month and day. So this is a very simple workflow. It's going from your memory card. It's gonna make a copy of what's on there and it's gonna go to your external hard drive. That's freaking simple, right? Now let's see more in depth what we have on the right column. The first panel is the file handling and the very first option is one of the most important options. You have to choose the quality of the previews that you are going to see inside Lightroom. This decision is gonna affect the speed of your workflow. The most comfortable setting for me is minimal. So minimal is the fastest way to get your images into Lightroom and see the thumbnails. Lightroom is going to use the smaller built-in preview that your camera generated every time a raw file is saved into your memory card. It's basically the smaller image that you see on the back of your camera. Then we have embedded and sidecar. This option is a little bit larger than minimal and it's made by your camera. That's actually the one you see when you zoom in on your camera display. Then standard means uh, that Lightroom is going to render its own preview that's much larger than the previous one. And then the last one is the one-to-one -one preview that is rendered in Lightroom to give you the best quality and to be able to zoom in at 100%, 200%, 400% immediately without any lag. This option takes a long time. For importing a, a row of 1,000 photos with a one-to-one -one preview, you can wait for a really long time. 
So my choice is always minimal. It doesn't bother me to wait for a second to zoom in on an image at 100%. Next, let's go ahead with other settings. Don't import suspected duplicates. This option is very handy to avoid importing any duplicate. I always keep it uh, checked. Then uh, file renaming, I leave it as it is. Uh, I don't rename my raw file. If you want, you have to turn on the checkbox, select a pre-made template uh, or create a custom one by selecting edit and choosing the details you want to use as a, a new name. Then another setting is the develop settings. If you want to apply a specific presets by default uh, on all the images you are going to import, uh, this is the right place to do it. I don't apply any kind of presets, uh, so I'm going to leave it uh, on none. Then we have a metadata. Here is where you can embed uh, uh, your contact information, your copyright information, or whatever information you want to embed into the file. You can create your own preset, so here I generally put my contact uh, and copyright info. Then we have uh, uh, keywords. Here you can insert the search keywords and these words will be applied to all the images you are going to import. I usually use generic keywords and then once I select my hero shots, uh, I will apply more specific and target keywords based on the content of the images. Now, I'm going to click the import button and done. Now we have uh, our images inside Lightroom. Let's have a look at the folder on my hard drive if everything is fine and everything is perfect. Okay, another scenario is when your images are stored on an external hard drive and you want to bring them into Lightroom. The process is the same process as we have just seen with the memory card. The source is going to be different, but the destination is the same we set up before. Let's have a look what are the differences. Okay, we already saw the first two copy options. The move option copies files from the selected source folder, copy them to the destination folder, and then deletes the folder and files from the original location. Then with a, an add import, instead, you are telling Lightroom to reference the files where they are located on your computer. You also have to bear in mind that Lightroom does not place any real restrictions as to how or where the images are stored. They can be stored anywhere you like. So I mainly suggest you use copy for all card imports and use add or move for folder imports. So now, to import your images, you have three options. The regular one, selecting imports, and then selecting the specific folder. A quicker method is to select uh, the folder you want to import and drag and drop to the Lightroom's icon. And here it is. All the photos come up automatically. Or the third method is uh, if you want to, you can just drag and drop the folder directly into the library window. And here they are. So at this point, our images are completely managed by Lightroom. Okay, and now importing our images from another catalog. Let me set up the scenario. When I travel, I always have with me my laptop to back up my images and do some edits. So on my laptop, I always create a catalog for the trip or the workshop that I'm going on. So here I have a catalog called Dolomite's Workshop. And I have some photos that are associated with that workshop. Once back home, what I need to do uh, with Lightroom is to bring this into my desktop catalog. And the way I do typically is going to the main menu, file, and choose import from another catalog. From here, I navigate to the trip catalog I want to merge. In this example, it's uh, the Dolomites workshop catalog, which is on my external travel drive. Lightroom will analyze the differences and similarities between the two catalogs and open an import from catalog dial box. In the catalog contents selection of the import uh, from catalog dial box, I can uncheck any folder I don't want it to import. I can also uncheck unwanted images from the previous window. Here we have uh, two options, add and copy. 
Like before, with Add, Lightroom will reference the new photos from their current location. And if I select Copy, I need to select the destination folder from the new photos, which in this case is the same photo folder uh, we used before. If you are merging catalogs that reference some of the same images, you have additional choices to make in uh, the Changed Existing Photos section. I usually leave uh, this uh, setting uh, on nothing, so it will leave uh, the master catalog as is, ignoring any shared images. All right, a quick tip. If we want to do this uh, even more quickly, what you can do is uh, hold down the Option key on a Mac and you'll notice that it changes your import and export buttons. So I'm going to select uh, Import Catalog and I'm going to select the External Catalog. And in this pop-up window, I can decide what to do. If I want to import, if I want to add or copy my images, so I'm going to select Copy New Photos to a new location and import, and Lightroom will bring in all the photos and the edits I've done. All right, guys, this is pretty much everything I do to import my photos in Lightroom. For other videos about Lightroom, check out the playlist here on my channel. I hope you found this video useful, and if you have any questions, drop me a comment below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!